Speaker Boehner, welcome back to the Cudlow Report. Good to be with you. Thank you. Let me begin, of course, with the catastrophe going on in Japan and, and ask you first, are there thoughts, policies, discussions in Congress? What can we do to help our Japanese friends? Well, clearly, uh, our hearts and souls go out uh, to the people of Japan and the tragedy that uh, they have faced and are facing. Uh, whether it's uh, uh, military help, whether it's our expertise, uh, food supplies, uh, a lot that we will be doing uh, to help the Japanese people. Let me ask you also, of course, related to this, is the whole issue of um, the threatened nuclear meltdown in Japan. Is that going to affect American energy policy? Are you going to hold additional hearings on this? Well, Chairman Upton at the Energy and Commerce Committee uh, already has a hearing scheduled for this week with the head of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And I'm sure the question will come up uh, about uh, uh, those types of plants, uh, what kind of experience we have here. Uh, but it's clear uh, that uh, there are lessons to be learned uh, from what's happening in Japan as we speak. Uh, and I think that we need to learn those lessons uh, as we continue to look at how do we produce uh, more energy from nuclear sources here in America. Uh, you were home this weekend, and Ohio has some nuclear uh, power plants. Did, did local folks, did voters, were they talking about this? Were they worried about their own nuclear plants? Uh, no, I didn't hear any concerns raised. But uh, as you watch these images on TV, you can't help uh, but be concerned uh, about uh, what caused this. Uh, these de design of these plants, as I understand, uh, is about they're about 40 years old, and what improvements have been made. Uh, over the course of the last 40 years, uh, and what's the risk uh, that we face if we continue uh, to uh, push more nuclear energy here in the United States? I think that's the question the American people want to know. And uh, I'm sure you're right. Is it, it, are people saying this is the end of nuclear energy policy? I uh, mean, is it going to be cut and dry, or are they going to no, give us an honest I, look? I, listen, I think we need we need to take a step back, uh, understand what happened understand what changes have been made, and really understand what, what, what are the risks here. As we all know, uh, Japan uh, sits uh, in a uh, volcanic area uh, prone to earthquakes. You know, they have some 1,500 earthquakes a year. Mm. Uh, we've got parts of the United States uh, that have some inclination toward earthquakes, but we have other parts of the country where there are, there's no threat. Uh, but we need to learn those lessons. Uh, but I don't think it should deter us uh, from trying to do everything we can uh, to move America toward energy independence. Let's turn back to the budget. On Friday, you unveiled a new continuing resolution, I guess, to stop a shutdown this Friday. You got another $6 billion of budget cuts in there towards your $61 billion target. Can this one get through? Uh, I believe that uh, the the continuing resolution this week will pass for another three weeks, keeping the government open, uh, and yet uh, cutting some six billion dollars, which means that over the last uh, several weeks we'll be able uh, to accumulate ten billion dollars worth of real savings. Uh, all of this uh, because the Democrats did no budget last year, they did no appropriation bills, and dumped this mess in our lap. Uh, I want the, the, the continuing resolution through September 30th finished as soon as possible. Uh, but that's going to mean real cuts. It's going to mean real limitations uh, on what this administration can do for the balance of this fiscal year. And I'm hopeful that we'll get it finished as soon as possible. I mean, you've got a lot of pressures, as we know. You've got Tea Party conservatives on one side. You've got people that want policy defunding of Obamacare on the other side. Democrats are way apart. I mean, it's almost a $50 billion gap. You told me a little while ago, if the Democrats won't take the whole loaf of budget cuts, you're going to give it to them one slice at a time. Do you think you can get most of the original $61 billion in cuts? Well, I think we'll see. We're in discussions uh, with the Democrats in the Senate, with the administration. Uh, we want to cut spending because cutting spending will lead to a better environment for businesses to help create jobs in America. Uh, that's uh, the core of what we're trying to do, bring some fiscal sanity to Washington, D.C. And you've also been talking about next year's budget, if you get to it, for 2012. And you want to put some entitlement reforms in there. You want to put some entitlement limits and caps. How specific will you be? What kind of size reduction in spending might that come to? We've got serious fiscal challenges facing our country. 
And it's time that we as Americans uh, have an adult conversation with each other about the serious challenges that face our country. Uh, no more kicking the can down the road. Uh, I've watched it go on for all the years that I've been here. Uh, so you will see us uh, bend the curve. Uh, you will see us lay out a plan that will not only balance the budget, but uh, pay off the debt. Uh, it's going to take a long time to do this, but it's time to make decisions. And the unfortunate part of this is that the president a year ago set up a deficit reduction commission. Uh, they did a lot of very good work, and they worked very hard. And I don't agree with everything they did. Uh, but when the president submitted uh, his budget about a month ago, not one idea from his own deficit reduction commission. Uh, that's just kicking the can down the road. It's whistling past the graveyard. And House Republicans, along with our colleagues in the Senate, uh, are not going to do that. If he won't lead, we will. I gave the president a letter signed by 150 economists over a month ago uh, that said that cutting federal spending will lead to a better environment for job creation in America. Businesses, uh, and I used to be a small businessman, uh, understand that uh, you can't continue to borrow 40 cents for every dollar the federal government spends. Uh, and if we begin to cut spending and people understand that we're serious about putting America uh, on a sound fiscal footing, uh, it will send a signal to business people and investors uh, that America is a place they can invest in. It's that investment that creates jobs. Let me ask one last one. Um, do you believe that President Obama has turned pro-business? I get this question all the time. He had a charm offensive. He spoke to the Chamber of Commerce, and particularly his new chief of staff, Bill Daly. Have you spoken to Mr. Daly? Have you heard from him that they want a pro-business, pro-growth agenda? How do you come out on all that? Have any changes really been made in the last couple of months? Well, in the I've White talked House? to the president a lot over the last couple of months. I've talked to Mr. Daly a number of times. Uh, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. I haven't seen any new actions yet. What are you looking for? What would be a hint? We'll send the three free trade agreements to Congress for our consideration. Uh, let's put a real moratorium on new regulations coming out of his administration, which he's also called for. How about Mr. Camp, your chairman of the Ways and Means Committee? He runs tax policy. I know he runs trade policy, too. Have you deputized him to come up with a um, business tax cut, business tax cut so reform bill? If we want to make America more competitive, uh, we've got to reform our corporate tax code. Uh, it, it, it's in the way of job creation in America. Uh, Dave Camp uh, is a great chairman. We came to Congress together 21 years ago. Uh, he is working. Uh, on that reform. There's a number of hearings that are already uh, set up. The administration appears to have some interest uh, in wanting to pursue this, uh, and I'm optimistic. Could this happen in my lifetime? Uh, it could happen this year. <laughs> okay. Speaker. I hope that would soon within your lifetime. I have high expectations. You think it could? You think you could get business tax reform this year? That's I do. Possible. I, I actually do. All right, Speaker John Boehner, we appreciate your time very much, sir. Nice to see you.